सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ सोशल साइंसेस फॉर क्लास सेवन ऑडियो बुक सोशल एंड पोलिटिकल लाइफ पार्ट टू क्लास सेवन चैप्टर फाइव टाइटल्ड वुमेन चेंज द वर्ल्ड फ्रॉम पेज नंबर फिफ्टी फोर टू सिक्सटी सेवन नाउ लेट्स लिसन टू चैप्टर फाइव टाइटल्ड वुमेन चेंज द वर्ल्ड पेज नंबर फिफ्टी फोर चैप्टर फाइव वुमेन चेंज द वर्ल्ड In the previous chapter we saw how women's work in the home is not recognized as work. We also read how doing household work and taking care of family members is a full-time job and there are no specific hours at which it begins or ends. In this chapter we will look at work outside the home and understand how some occupations are seen to be more suitable for men than for women we will also learn about how women struggle for equality getting an education was and still is one way in which new opportunities were created for women This chapter will also briefly trace the different types of efforts made by the women's movement to challenge discrimination in more recent years. On page number 54 there is a diagram given of a small girl holding the globe of the world in her hands looking at it and smiling. Page number 55 There is an activity given here on page number 55 titled Who does what work There are six empty boxes given here on page number 55 Above the boxes it is written draw the images of a farmer a factory worker a nurse a scientist a pilot and a teacher You have to make the drawings of each of these people inside the boxes what images your class drew by filling in the table given here add up the number of male and female images separately for each occupation there is a table given here on page number 55 in this table there are three columns mentioned category male image and female image in the category column the names mentioned are teacher farmer factory worker nurse scientist and pilot are there more images of men than women in what kinds of jobs were there more images of men than women have all the nurses been drawn as females why are there fewer images of female farmers if so why page number 56 On page number 56 there is a picture given. In this picture two women are harvesting the maize crop while talking to each other and smiling. There is a note given next to the picture which reads 83.6% of working women in India are engaged in agricultural work. Their work includes planting, weeding, harvesting and threshing. Yet when we think of a farmer we only think of a man source NSS 61st round 2004 to 2005 Rosie ma'am's class has 30 children she did the same exercise in her class and here is the result again the same table is given here as was mentioned on page number 55 with three columns category male image and female image in the category of teacher five male images were made and 25 female images were made in the farmer category 30 male images have been given and in the female image zero female images have been given in the category of factory workers there are 25 male images whereas only 5 female images 
in the nurse category zero male images have been given and in the female one 30 images have been given in the category of scientist male images were 25 whereas the female images were 5 and in the pilot category there are 27 male images whereas female images are 3 page number 57 fewer opportunities and rigid expectations a lot of the children in rosie mam's class drew women as nurses and men as army officers The reason they did this is because they feel that outside the home too women are good at only certain jobs. For example, many people believe that women make better nurses because they are more patient and gentle. This is linked to women's roles within the family. Similarly, it is believed that science requires a technical mind and girls and women are not capable of dealing with technical things. because so many people believe in these stereotypes many girls do not get the same support that boys do to study and train to become doctors and engineers in most families once girls finish school they are encouraged by their families to see marriage as their main aim in life there is a box given here on page number 57 which has the title of breaking stereotypes a story is given here about the 27 year old lakshmi lakra from a poor tribal family in jharkhand who became a women engine driver for the northern railways she is the first women engine driver for the northern railways there is a picture given here of 27 year old lakshmi lakra driving the railway engine Engine drivers are men but 27 year old Lakshmi Lakra from a poor tribal family in Jharkhand has begun to change things She is the first woman engine driver for Northern Railways Lakshmi's parents are not literate but they struggled and overcame many hardships to make sure their children got an education Lakshmi studied in a government school even in school Lakshmi helped with the housework and did odd jobs. She studied hard and did well and then went on to get a diploma in electronics. She then took the railway board exam and passed it on her first attempt. Lakshmi says, "I love challenges and the moment somebody says it is not for girls, I make sure I go ahead and do it." Lakshmi has had to do this several times in her life when she wanted to take electronics when she rode the motorcycles at the polytechnic and when she decided to become an engine driver her philosophy is simple as long as i'm having fun without harming anyone as long as i'm doing well and helping my parents why should i not lead a lifestyle of my choice The story has been adapted from Driving Her Train by Neeta Lal Women's Features Service Page number 58 It is important to understand that we live in a society in which all children face pressures from the world around them Sometimes these come in the form of demands from adults at other times they can just be because of unfair teasing by our own friends boys are pressurized to think about getting a job that will pay a good salary they are also teased and bullied if they do not behave like other boys you may remember that in your class 6 book you read about how boys at an early age are encouraged not to cry in front of others hear the story and answer the questions if you were xavier what subject would you choose and why in your experience what are some of the other pressures that boys experience xavier was happy with the results of his class 10th board exams though his marks in science and maths were not high 
He had done well in his favorite subjects, history and languages. When his parents saw his report card, however, they did not look pleased at all. My goodness, Xavier, you have managed only 65% in maths. Your marks in physics are low too. I know, Mama, but it's okay because I don't want to take maths or science. I want to study history. Why do you want to take history? Think about your future. You have to get a good job. History will not help. It has no scope. But, but I don't like maths or science. Be sensible, son. Take maths and you can study computers side by side. The job market for computers is very good. Page number 59. On this page, there is a picture given of some women working in a factory. Again, on the same page, there is a picture of a lady with her daughter. Next to it, a note is given, which reads... Ramabai, 1858 to 1922, has been picturized here with her daughter, championed the cause of women's education. She never went to school but learned to read and write from her parents. She was given the title Pandita because she could read and write Sanskrit, a remarkable achievement as women then were not allowed such knowledge. She went on to set up a mission in Khedgaon near Pune in 1898, where widows and poor women were encouraged not only to become literate, but to be independent. They were taught a variety of skills from carpentry to running a printing press, skills that are not usually taught to girls even today. The picture of the printing press is given here on the top left corner of this page. Rama Bai's mission is still active today. Learning for change. Going to school is an extremely important part of your life. As more and more children enter school every year, we begin to think that it is normal for all children to go to school. Today, it is difficult for us to imagine that school and learning could be seen as out of bounds or not appropriate for some children. But in the past, the skill of reading and writing was known to only a few. Most children learnt the work their families or elders did. For girls, the situation was worse. In communities that taught sons to read and write, daughters were not allowed to learn the alphabet. Even in families, where skills like pottery, weaving and craft were taught, the contribution of daughters and women was only seen as supportive. For example, in the pottery trade, women collected the mud and prepared the earth for the pots. But since they did not operate the wheel, they were not seen as potters. In the 19th century, many new ideas about education and learning emerged. Schools became more common and communities that had never learnt reading and writing started sending their children to school. But there was a lot of opposition to educating girls even then. Yet, many women and men made efforts to open schools for girls. Women struggled to learn to read and write. Page number 60 let us hear about the experience of Rush Sundari Devi from 1800 to 1890, who was born in West Bengal some 200 years ago. At the age of 60, she wrote her autobiography in Bangla. Her book, titled Omar Jeevan, is the first known autobiography written by an Indian woman. Rush Sundari Devi was a housewife from a rich landlord's family. At that time, it was believed that if a woman learnt to read and write, she would bring bad luck to her husband and become a widow. Despite this, she taught herself how to read and write in secret well after her marriage. 
I would start working at dawn and I would still be at it until well beyond midnight. I had no rest in between. I was only 14 years old at the time. I came to nurture a great longing. I would learn to read and I would read a religious manuscript. Rukaiya Sakhavat Hussain and her dreams about Ladyland. In this box, a picture of Rukaiya Sakhavat Hussain is drawn and also there is a picture of her book titled Sultana's Dream. Rukia Sakhavat Hussain, 1880-1932, was born into a rich family who owned a lot of land. Though she knew how to read and write Urdu, she was stopped from learning Bangla and English. In those days, English was seen as a language that would expose girls to new ideas which people thought were not correct for them. Therefore, it was mostly boys who were taught English. Rokia learned to read and write Bangla and English with the support of her elder brother and an elder sister. She went on to become a writer. She wrote a remarkable story titled Sultana's Dream in 1905 to practice her English skills when she was merely 25 years old. This story imagined a woman called Sultana who reaches a place called Ladyland. Ladyland is a place where women had the freedom to study, work and create inventions like controlling rain from the clouds and flying air cars. In this Ladyland, the men had been sent into seclusion. Their aggressive guns and other weapons of war, defeated by the brain power of women. As Sultana travels in Ladyland with sister Sarah, she awakes to realize that she was only dreaming. As you can see, Rukia Sakhavat Hussain was dreaming of women flying planes and cars even before girls were being allowed to go to school. This was the way in which education and learning had changed Rukia's own life. Rukia did not stop at getting education just for herself. Her education gave her the power not only to dream and write, but also to do more, to help other girls go to school and to build their own dreams. In 1910, she started a school for girls in Kolkata. And to this day, the school is still functioning. Learning to read and write led some women to question the situation of women in society. They wrote stories, letters and autobiographies describing their own experiences of inequality. In their writings, they also imagined new ways of thinking and living for both men and women. Page number 61 I was unlucky. In those days, women were not educated. Later, I began to resent my own thoughts. What is wrong with me? Women do not read. How will I do it? Then I had a dream. I was reading the manuscript of Chaitanya Bhagavat, The Life of a Saint. Later in the day, as I sat cooking in the kitchen, I heard my husband say, to my eldest son. Bipin, I have left my Chaitanya Bhagavat here. When I ask for it, bring it in. He left the book there and went away. When the book had been taken inside, I secretly took out a page and hid it carefully. It was a job hiding it, for nobody must find it in my hands. My eldest son was practicing his alphabets at that time. I hid one of them as well. At times, I went over that, trying to match letters from that page with the letters that I remembered. I also tried to match the words with those that I would hear in the course of my days. With tremendous care and effort, and over a long period of time, 
I learnt how to read. After learning the alphabet, Rush Sundari Devi was able to read the Chaitanya Bhagavat. Through her own writing, she also gave the world an opportunity to read about women's lives in those days. Rush Sundari Devi wrote about her everyday life experiences in details. There were days when she did not have a moment's rest, no time even to sit down and eat. Here on page number 61, there is a picture given. In this picture, a girl is reading a book sitting on a floor mat. Next to the picture, a note is given. Unlike Rashu Sundari Devi and Rokeya Hossain, who were not allowed to learn to read and write, large number of girls attend school in India today. Despite this, there continues to be many girls who leave school for reasons of poverty, inadequate schooling facilities and discrimination. Providing equal schooling facilities to children from all communities and class backgrounds, and particularly girls, continues to be a challenge in India. Again on the same page, there is a poster given by Sustainable Development Goal SDG www.in.undp.org. In this poster, a teacher is explaining something to her students. Slogan given is Quality Education. Schooling and Education Today Today, both boys and girls attend school in large numbers. Yet, as we will hear, there still remains differences between the education of boys and girls. India has a census every 10 years which counts the whole population of the country. It also gathers detailed information about the people living in India, their age, schooling, what work they do and so on. We use this information to measure many things like the number of literate people and the ratio of men and women. According to the 1961 census, about 40% of all boys and men, 7 years old and above, were literate. That is, they could at least write their names, compared to just 15% of all girls and women. Page number 62 in the most recent census of 2011, these figures have grown to 82% for boys and men and 65% for girls and women. This means that the proportion of both men and women who are now able to read and have at least some amount of schooling has increased. But, as you can also hear, the percentage of the male group is still higher than the female group. The gap has not gone away. There is a table given here which mentions the percentage of girls and boys who leave schools from different social groups including scheduled caste SC and scheduled tribe ST. A table is given here on page number 62 titled Average Annual Dropout Rate in School Education from 2014 to 15. The figures given in this table are in percentage. There are four columns given here, titled Level, All, SC and ST. In the Level column, it is mentioned Primary, that is classes 1st to 5th, Upper Primary, that is classes 6th to 8th and Secondary, that is classes 9th to 10th. Under the categories of all, SC and ST, the percentage of boys and girls who leave schools from different social groups has been mentioned. Source, Educational Statistics at a Glance, MHRD, 2018. What percentage of children leave school at the upper primary level? At which level of education do you hear the highest percentage of children leaving? Why do you think Why do you think that the percentage of Adivasi girls and boys leaving school is higher than that of any other group? 
you have probably noticed in the table given here that SC and ST girls leave school at a rate that is higher than the category of all girls. This means that girls who are from Dalit, that is SC, and Adivasi, that is ST backgrounds, are less likely to remain in school. The 2011 census also found that Muslim girls are less likely than SC and ST girls to complete primary school, while a Muslim girl is likely to stay in school for around three years. Girls from other communities spend around four years in school. There are several reasons why children from Dalit, Adivasi and Muslim communities leave school. In many parts of the country, especially in rural and poor areas, there may not even be proper schools nor teachers who teach on a regular basis. Page number 63 if a school is not close to people's home and there is no transport like buses or vans, parents may not be willing to send their girls to school. Many families are too poor and unable to bear the cost of educating all their children. Boys may get preference in this situation. Many children also leave school because they are discriminated against by their teacher and classmates, just like Om Prakash Valmiki was. There is a campaign logo given here on page number 63 for the campaign of Beti Bachao, Beti Parhao. Find out about the Beti Bachao, Beti Parhao campaign launched in 2014. From the given table, convert the figures of primary class children who leave school into a bar diagram. Two percentages have already been converted for you in the bar diagram on to the left. There is a bar diagram given here on page number 63 in which two percentages have been converted. The categories of the converted percentages are all boys and ST boys. You have to convert the other percentages and draw it in the bar diagram. Women's Movement Women and girl now have the right to study and go to school. There are other spheres like legal reform, violence and health where the situation of women and girls have improved. These changes have not happened automatically. Women individually and collectively have struggled to bring about these changes. This struggle is known as the women's movement. Individual women and women's organizations from different parts of the country are part of the movement. Many men support the women's movement as well. The diversity, passion and efforts of those involved makes it a very vibrant movement. Different strategies have been used to spread awareness, fight discrimination and seek justice. Here are some glimpses of this struggle. There is a picture given here on page number 63 in which there is a human women pyramid drawn. In this pyramid, we can see women helping women to reach the top. Page number 64. Campaigning. Campaigns to fight discrimination and violence against women are an important part of the women's movement. Campaigns have also led to new laws being passed. A law was made in 2006 to give women who face physical and mental violence within their homes, also called domestic violence. Similarly, Efforts made by the women's movement led the Supreme Court to formulate guidelines in 1997 to protect women against sexual harassment at the workplace and within educational institutions. There is a picture given here on page number 64 in which a woman's protest is happening. A girl can be seen distributing pamphlets. In the 1980s, for example, Women's groups across the country spoke out against dowry deaths. 
cases of young brides being murdered by their in-laws or husbands, greedy for more dowry. Women's groups spoke out against the failure to bring these cases to justice. They did so by coming on to the streets, approaching the courts and by sharing information. Eventually, this became a public issue in the newspapers and society. And the dowry laws were changed to punish families who seek dowry. There is a picture given here on page number 64, which shows Satya Rani, an active member of the women's movement sitting on the steps of the Supreme Court, surrounded by legal files gathered during the course of a long legal battle to seek justice for her daughter who was murdered for dowry. There is another picture given here on page number 64, which has many placards of slogans lying on the road after a protest. Page number 65. Raising awareness. An important part of the women's movement's work is to raise public awareness on women's rights issues. Their message has been spread through street plays, songs and public meetings. There are two pictures given here on page number 65. In one of the pictures, a woman is teaching other women about the hospitals and public utilities. In the second picture, women's rights activists are raising awareness about socially relevant issues through the medium of plays and songs. Protesting The women's movement raises its voice when violations against women take place or, for example, when a law or policy acts against their interests. Public rallies and demonstrations are a very powerful way of drawing attention to injustices. There is a picture given here on page number 65, wherein a public rally of women activists is taking place. Page number 66. Showing Solidarity the women's movement is also about showing solidarity with other women and causes. A picture is given here on page number 66, in which a women's protest is taking place. A note is given beside the picture, which reads, On 8th March, that is, International Women's Day, women all over the world come together to celebrate and renew their struggles. There is another picture given here on page number 66 in which women can be seen lighting candles at a protest march. There is a note given beside the picture which reads, Women are holding up candles to demonstrate the solidarity between the people of India and Pakistan. Every year on 14th August, several thousand people gather at Vaga on the border of India and Pakistan and hold a cultural program. Here on page number 66, again there is a picture given of a protest in which many women are participating. Page number 67. Exercises. 1. How do you think stereotypes about what women can or cannot do affect women's right to equality? 2. List one reason why learning the alphabet was so important to women like Rasha Sundari Devi, Ramabai and Rokia. 3. Poor girls drop out of school because they are not interested in getting an education. Hear the last paragraph on page number 62 again and explain why this statement is not true. 4. Can you describe two methods of struggle? that the women's movement used to raise issues? If you had to organize a struggle against stereotypes about what women can or cannot do, what method would you employ from the ones that you have read about? Why would you choose this particular method? Glossary Stereotype when we believe that people belonging to particular groups based on religion, wealth, 
language are bound to have certain fixed characteristics or can only do a certain type of work, we create a stereotype. For example, in this chapter, we saw how boys and girls are made to take certain subjects not because he or she has an aptitude for it, but because they are either boys or girls. Stereotypes prevent us from looking at people as unique individuals. Discrimination When we do not treat people equally or with respect, we are indulging in discrimination. It happens when people or organizations act on their prejudices. Discrimination usually takes place when we treat someone differently or make a distinction. Violation When someone forcefully breaks the law or a rule or openly shows disrespect, we can say that he or she has committed a violation. Sexual harassment This refers to physical or verbal behavior that is of a sexual nature and against the wishes of a woman. You were just listening to chapter number 5 titled Women Change the World. With it, chapter 5 of total 9 chapters ends here. Narrators Shalini Singh and Vaibhav Srivastav. You were just listening to this audiobook. Technical Control, Bati Langlingdo. Technical Assistance, Mayank Kumar. Assistance in Production, Tanu Gupta. Direction and Production, Vandana Arimardan. This audiobook is brought to you by CIET and CERT, New Delhi, India.